Peru, go ahead. Okay. Good, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome from my side. This is uh, Piero Venturi talking. I'm the EU Science Councillor to the African Union. I'm located uh, in uh, Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, and I will be the moderator of uh, this event. The focus of uh, this event is uh, um, the new call on uh, uh, Horizon Europe, the framework program on research and innovation of uh, the European Union. And uh, it's a strong focus on Africa through a package called Africa Initiative 2. This is an event with a focus on uh, Mauritius. So it's an event organized for uh, uh, scientists uh, from uh, the island. Well, our program uh, will uh, we'll start uh, with uh, the opening remarks uh, the political views of uh, the EU ambassador uh, to the Republic of Mauritius, Mr. Vincent Deger. And then uh, it will be followed by a presentation that I will give about uh, the results of the first Africa initiative and the future strategic priorities is in Africa initiative too. Then we, have, we will have a focus on researchers' mobility. So we will have a presentation on uh, Marie Slodowska Curie Actions, better known um, as uh, Marie Curie Grants, and uh, a presentation on a new, very interesting platform that, for example, is managing this, this uh, event, that is EuroAccess Africa. Then we want to uh, listen uh, um, to have uh, testimonials how is it uh, for uh, an African scientist to work uh, with uh, European scientists using uh, EU funding opportunities? So we will have uh, uh, Nadine uh, Laguette, that is an uh, ERC grantee. Then we will have open floor for your questions. You can uh, ask whatever. We have a, a, a chat and then we will give the floor also for uh, um, for your, your uh, questions alive. Um, that said, uh, well, I see, well, oh, but it's very nice because I see that uh, the ambassador is, uh, is connected. So, and uh, there is a, a Ponam that is uh, requesting for the floor. Uh, well, Ambassador, I suppose uh, you are, you are uh, uh, already in. So I'm very glad to give you the floor. You have to unmute yourself. Yes, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Piero Venturi and uh, dear colleagues. Great pleasure to, uh, to talk to you uh, today. I don't know if you have me on the screen. Uh, the camera is working. Not, not yet, not. but we can hear you. OK, maybe then I, I simply go on uh, with my uh, few um, introductory words. First of all, it's a, it's a great pleasure uh, to welcome uh, you all, uh, Piero Venturi, as I said, the um, science councillor in our delegation uh, to the African uh, Union and all of its team of research. Access worldwide and all of them will be uh, intervening in a minute uh, to uh, give you uh, more substance on our um, program, our Horizon Europe. I think we are coming to the screen. Yes, here we go. Little technical problem. Hopefully, Horizon can help us to resolve all these uh, technicalities in the um, in the future. Um, as I said, I'm really delighted that we have this um, opportunity um, today uh, to present the program uh, in Mauritius. Um, it is, as we all know, a very ambitious uh, program, uh, which is uh, worth 95.5 uh, uh, billion euros for the period uh, 21 uh, 27. That shows the ambition of the European Union in the field of uh, research and um, innovation. In that context, we are wanting, of course, to work very closely with our partner countries, and in particular with our African uh, partner uh, countries. And therefore, 
uh, we have launched and you have launched in December of uh, last year, this Africa initiative uh, number two, which is a call for proposal for the period 23-24 of around 300 uh, million uh, euros. So we will hear more about uh, the opportunities offered by these uh, call for proposals and how our African partners can link up and work with us on all of these um, initiatives. Mauritius, as we know, is uh, a priority country also in these uh, calls. And uh, therefore, we are delighted to be able to team up uh, with the Ministry of uh, Finance and uh, Economy in uh, presenting uh, this event uh, today. Let me say a few words just briefly about uh, why uh, the European Union wants to promote uh, research and uh, innovation also with our uh, partner countries. We are and we have been for many, many years a trusted global partner of our um, countries here uh, in the region and of Mauritius, uh, obviously. And we do not just want to be a development partner, we don't just want to be a trade partner, we also want to be a science, technology and innovation uh, partner of uh, Mauritius. We want to do that because uh, we are uh, deeply convinced that uh, research and innovation is an engine for the green and digital uh, transition on the continent. And uh, we are projecting uh, for the European Union that we should have some 320,000 highly uh, skilled new jobs uh, created by 2040. And we want to associate our uh, African partners to this uh, new dynamic. It's also a question of investment. We know that by investing one euro in our uh, research innovation program, we are hoping to generate more than 11 other euros of uh, investment. So it's a win-win operation between the European Union and the African uh, continent and islands like uh, Mauritius, uh, obviously. Um, we have uh, in the past, we have had a big reform in uh, sector has been a uh, beneficiary of the predecessor of the Horizon uh, Europe uh, program, our Horizon 2020, as it used to be uh, the case. And we also have been working in the past with the National Computer Board. So there is already a good uh, experience in this uh, dynamic uh, cooperation between the EU and uh, Mauritius. Now, looking into the future, we have big ambitions for Mauritius. Uh, the government uh, wants to uh, boost a number of uh, sectors. I was just uh, with the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs just a minute ago to discuss those various ambitions. They are spreading uh, from being a pharmaceutical hub uh, here in uh, Mauritius, uh, boosting also the um, blue uh, economy dimension and the digitalization and cybersecurity, just to mention a few of the sectors where uh, Mauritius wants to be a bridge between um, Africa and, and the European uh, Union. What is uh, Horizon Europe uh, all about? I mentioned the uh, amounts already uh, involved, which are quite uh, impressive. What are those amounts going to be targeting as uh, priorities? First of all, I think enhancing green and digital uh, transition. We want to be making the EU a carbon uh, national neutral continent by uh, 2050. And this is our great uh, ambition of our president and we want to boost all our efforts in that direction. We want also to learn from the past experience and notably past crises. We want to improve our global health by tackling um, health uh, risks and uh, in a one health uh, approach. We want to improve also mobility. We want to boost uh, energy efficiency and there is a lot to be done here in the field also of renewable energies. And we want of course to ensure uh, food security, which is for an island like Mauritius, a very clear priority as we are working a lot on issues such as smart agricultural techniques with the uh, local uh, institute like the FARE or the University of uh, Mauritius already uh, today. Addressing, of course, uh, climate change for a seed like Mauritius is uh, a must and this is with the raising level of uh, water and the bleaching of corals a very clear 
priority also for Mauritius, who wants to boost this multidimensional vulnerability uh, index. How can uh, Mauritius benefit uh, from uh, our uh, program? Um, there is uh, a great opportunity and potential to uh, support the ambition of the uh, government in the various sector by networking uh, and developing the uh, knowledge between the uh, scientists and also in linking uh, the scientific community with um, industries. These are all the uh, big ambitions that we have with this uh, Horizon uh, Europe uh, program. I'm sure that uh, Mauritius and its uh, research uh, capacity can fully benefit, as it has done in the past, uh, from this uh, Horizon uh, program. And we uh, really look forward to the uh, presentation by you, uh, Piero Venturi, and by your uh, colleagues to see how we can link up the um, research community here uh, in uh, Mauritius, its great ambition, and uh, our uh, researchers back in Europe. Thank you, and the floor is back to you. Thanks so very much. Many, many, many thanks, Ambassador, for your uh, uh, your inspiring words. You really uh, set up uh, the political uh, views concerning our research and innovation cooperation between uh, Europe and Mauritius and Africa. Uh, you also identified uh, the main priorities for Mauritius, so pharmaceutical, blue economy, and cybersecurity amongst uh, different others, and then the importance of the industries for the country. So the importance to link these industries with our uh, framework program, Horizon Europe. Many, many thanks for uh, your words, uh, Ambassador. And now we go to more technical issue with uh, uh, my, okay, here it is with, my presentation. I hope you can uh, you can see it. Uh, Hamed, could you confirm? Yes, it's okay. But if you can uh, put full screen. Oh. For some unknown reason, the the slideshow is not working. I can no. do like this. No, Pierre, just stop the sharing the screen, and after that, uh, there is the option uh, uh, entire screen. Select entire screen, not only the, pre the presentation, because if there is entire screen, you can uh, put full screen after that. Okay. Uh, full screen. Okay. Entire screen, and after that, uh, put uh, full screen of the presentation. Okay. Well, I. Uh... <laughs> No, I really, I really cannot uh, uh, show small active speaker video. No, now, now I have also the problem that uh, I have my, my, I try again. Good. Yeah. I go ahead. Okay. Please. Okay. Well, uh, so uh, my my presentation will uh, focus on uh, the, um, the the political vision behind uh, uh, Horizon Europe work program, and uh, then I will enter into detail about the new calls of uh, uh, 2023-24 uh, of uh, Horizon Europe with focus on uh, on uh, um, Africa. So, well, when we talk about uh, our uh, political vision, we cannot forget that uh, um, Africa is considered a strong strategic partner for Europe. This is also confirmed by the fact that the first visit that uh, our president, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, um, organized out of Europe, it was to come to uh, Addis Ababa to visit uh, the African Union Commission. And uh, our task is uh, to enhance our cooperation with Africa, promoting uh, uh, specific actions targeted to uh, support uh, locally adapted solution to global challenges. 
This uh, uh, vision is also confirmed by two important documents. The first one was issued uh, um, some time ago and is a comprehensive EU strategy with Africa. In this uh, uh, sector, uh, well, this, uh, this document covered different areas, but specifically when we talk about uh, scientific cooperation, uh, the uh, objective um, is made very clear. It's uh, to set up, to scale up this cooperation, creating uh, um, a positive synergy to set up uh, a common knowledge-based society. One year ago, it was also published uh, the global approach to research and innovation. That is uh, the, um, the most uh, recent document concerning uh, initiatives uh, that must be prioritized in uh, research and innovation, aiming to set up a um, key dimension of sustainable development. And uh, then we cannot forget that all our work, uh, our cooperation um, between uh, Africa and Europe is, uh, um, is uh, based, is set up in uh, uh, the high level policy dialogue on science, technology and innovation, which is a platform where African Union, European Union, African and European member states together are working to set up long-term priorities aiming to set uh, to strengthen our cooperation under uh, its organization we had uh, uh, almost three years ago the first ever uh, african union european union rni ministerial meeting that uh, established uh, the four joint priorities that uh, are the base of our work today these four uh, priorities are public health, green transition, innovation and technology, and capacity for science. But now I want to make one step back and uh, having a look at uh, the main uh, aims of uh, the global approach to research and innovation. Well, first of all, it, uh, this document and uh, so our, our policies are aiming to preserve openness in research and innovation. This means uh, to keep all the partners all over the world at the same level, promoting what we call a level playing field, a place where everybody has the same rights, same rights concerning uh, IPR, open science, and um, where, um, where fundamental values are, uh, are also key issues. So uh, the possibility to share information and to, and to live in a, in a democracy. For us, it's also extremely important to move in a multilateral world. So this uh, is considered the ideal, the ideal platform to deliver new solutions to global challenges in the areas of green, digital, health, and innovation. When we talk about multilaterals, we don't have to think only about a uh, um, more political platform, like for example, G7, G20, uh, UN. We also can think about more specific platform dealing specifically with uh, some topics like, for example, the uh, ICPP, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or, uh, for example, EDCTP, that is a platform we will see later concerning uh, uh, clinical trials. Just to make uh, two examples. Our objectives will be achieved, uh, first of all, uh, modulating, modulating our bilateral cooperation with uh, global partners. We cannot avoid uh, to have bilateral relations uh, with uh, China with the US, but always taking into account our values and interest, and also considering our strategic autonomy. We cannot, uh, we cannot avoid to remember that in the past, we have been extreme, extremely naive, sharing our information, our um, uh, re scientific results with uh, uh, other countries that has been using them. And uh, so, now we want to have a, a more strategic approach in our research. For what concerns our interaction with low and middle income countries, our objective is to accelerate sustainable and inclusive development, 
uh, helping them to move uh, to a resilient knowledge-based society and economy. This is always must be carried out following a Team Europe approach. This means that we want to, we want and we need to work in full synergy with European member states and European financial institutions, like for example, the European Investment Bank. Well, these are a little bit uh, what I already mentioned, the guiding principle of uh, our uh, activities commitment to openness by following our values and principle and following uh, and based on a level playing field and reciprocity with the aim to uh, pool global efforts to tackle global challenges. But now let's talk uh, more about Horizon Europe. As the ambassador already mentioned, this is a huge program that uh, will last for uh, seven years, from 2021 till 27, with a budget uh, around 100 billion will be euros. This is by far the uh, biggest research and cooperative pro program in, uh, in the world. And it's open to Mauritian and to all the African uh, scientists and partner. When I say it's open, I mean uh, uh, it's uh, are very welcome to participate. Scientific community, scientific uh, uh, research center, uh, NGOs, uh, governmental institutions, uh, private sector. All these uh, these uh, uh, institutions are welcome to be involved. When we talk about the program, this is the main slide. So we have uh, in the pillar one excellent science. So we have, uh, for example, the European Research uh, uh, Council grants. Uh, we are very glad to have today Nadine uh, that uh, is one of these grantees. This is a, a, a program that offer uh, grants for skyrocket science, really brilliant ideas that need, uh, research, that they need a solution. And just to give you an idea, many of the European Nobel Prizes, uh, they have uh, this kind of uh, of uh, uh, grants. Yeah. And uh, then yeah. uh, we have Marie Sklodowska Curie, that is a platform that will be presented also by my yeah, colleague yeah. Maria. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think someone, someone should mute itself. Uh, uh, Thanks. Yeah. This is just because we, we uh, uh, there is a problem with the slides. We see only the first one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've been talking. Okay. Just if you can move to. I, I stop share. I share again. Okay. Hmm. It's here. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's okay. Okay. Well. I'm sorry, you could have telling me before <laughs> I was talking and <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, well, here, here you can see it. this is the pillar one, as I mentioned, European Research Council. Then we have Marie Sklodowska Curie that are um, grants uh, that uh, are for PhD, postdoc, uh, um, different uh, uh, synergetic uh, grants between universities in Europe and in any other part of the world. And then we have the pillar two that uh, is including uh, um, different clusters representing the main challenges we are facing nowadays. So health, uh, uh, culture, creative and inclusive society, civic security, digital industry and space. Then we have climate, energy and mobility, and then food, bioeconomy and agriculture. Okay, well, then there is the pillar three that is really focused on Europe. So I don't suggest to, um, to the uh, scientists from Aurethus to apply for, for this because it's really, as I say, focused on European scientists. Now I move to the next uh, slide. I, I hope you can see it. Please confirm me, um, Hamed. Uh, Hamed, can you can you see the the other slide? Yes, it's okay. Yes. Okay. Well, our program is uh, based on openness. This means uh, that uh, 
uh, as I say, it's open uh, to any country in, uh, in the world with few exceptions, we will see later. And uh, uh, the access to EU funding. Well, for African partners, as I say, uh, EU is fully supporting your participation to the program. We don't have a similar situation, obviously, when we, we have partners, for example, from Japan, from uh, US, from uh, uh, Australia. In this case, they need to support their participation. Then we have specifically targeted international cooperation actions based on different factors factors that we will see in the next slide. And as I say, we always have to safeguard our EU interest. When we talk about uh, international uh, cooperation actions, we have to consider that uh, there are topics uh, that uh, have a special international focus. This can be due to different reasons. For example, if we have strategic thematic areas, for example, I just make an example. If we talk about the impact of climate change on desertic areas, obviously this is a topic that can have a strong interest for Africa. Or we can have a, a specific request for geographical areas. So in the, the topic could be focused on, uh, for example, um, Latin America, and sub-Saharan Africa. In this case, obviously, the participation of uh, um, African countries, African partners, is uh, uh, requested or compulsory in, uh, the, um, in the topic. Then we can have multilateral initiatives, as, uh, for example, the one that we will see later, the um, Africa Initiative 2. And then we have collaboration with key partners, for example, topics where, uh, that we set up together with Japan. And in this case, obviously, the participation of Europeans and uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, stakeholders is uh, requested. Just to give you an idea, 22% of all the topics are flagged as international cooperation topic. Here you see uh, this. Uh, this uh, um, hyperlink with uh, where is written portal. Well, this is extremely important. When you enter into this, this is the tenders portal. And over there, you can find any kind of information about uh, the topics, details about, uh, about uh, the composition of uh, the consortia and uh, what uh, um, we expect uh, as a result of uh, the, the topic. In the next slide, well, this is also uh, something that we need to consider that, uh, and it's, in, it's right uh, uh, to mention this, well, following uh, the Russian aggression to uh, Ukraine, that is uh, firmly condemned by the EU and the Commission, a series of sanctions were taken against Russia and Belarusia. For this reason, uh, they are not, uh, their partners are not, uh, their institutions are not entitled to participate to our cooperative programs. And exceptions must be taken into account uh, you know, on a case by case basis. For example, just to give you an example, the Russian scientists that are working in CERN, that is an international research center in uh, Geneva, they are allowed to work there. But uh, Russian institution program. And now let's go to the Africa Initiative 2. This is uh, uh, based on the very positive result of Africa Initiative 1 that uh, was, in, uh, uh, was published in the uh, work program 2021-22. And uh, Africa Initiative 2 has a budget of around 300 million euros with uh, around 30 topics under calls for proposals. The um, areas of interest are included in the areas defined by our ministerial, so green transition, innovation and technology, and capacity for science. Uh, these are um, topics that has been selected in, um, uh, that has been published the 6th of December. And here you find another uh, hyperlink to the tenders portal. But now let's go 
let's go more in detail about uh, about uh, uh, the our our uh, topics so so here uh, just to explain a little bit of the table we have uh, uh, the first uh, on the first column the thematic cluster where you will find we will find the focus on the topic the second column is the title of the call and then you have action type for example csa uh, means concerted support action so specifically this is not a research action this is a, an action aiming to identify next step in uh, this sector so obviously everyone can attend but this typically is a, an action with the participation of a, um, national uh, center or a more uh, minister, ministers of uh, research that are aiming to set up future steps for uh, our cooperation. Then we have the budget. Well, obviously when we have a budget of uh, 1.5 to 3 million, this means just one, one uh, project will be funded. When we find uh, uh, topics like uh, like uh, this one, for example, IA, this means innovation action. This is a strong focus on innovation. And with a budget of 20 million, we can expect that at least four topics will be supported. And then we find uh, RAI, that means research, innovation, action. And over here, obviously, the focus is on research. When uh, uh, then, as I say, we have the budget and the year. When we find uh, 2023, this means that the deadline for presentation of proposals is 2023. 24, uh, obviously, will be the, the following year. And then here we have uh, the priority area that we identified among our four uh, priorities areas of cooperation. But uh, let's go to... Oops, now, sorry, I go back. Uh, let's go to have a, a quick look at uh, the first slide that is dealing with capacity for science, innovation, and technology. So the first topic is dealing with uh, research infrastructure with Africa. Then we have another one focusing on uh, the innovation platform between African Union and European Union. And uh, then uh, the third one uh, with cooperation with Sub-Saharan Africa. Then we have the, uh, the um, uh, cluster, the focus on the cluster digital industry and space with uh, the, a topic on uh, promoting EU standards globally. Another one on Earth observation platform. And the last one on designing space-based downstream applications with international partners. If we move to the next slide, here you can see there is a very strong focus on green transition and specifically in this one on climate, energy and mobility. So we have a topic on adaptation to climate change in Africa. Another one on low emission climate, climate resilient pathways and nationally determined contribution for a, a future align with the Paris alignment. Then we have three topics on uh, uh, the partnership on batteries. The first one on battery grade materials. The second one on energy storage solution for grid support. And the last one is on uh, non-lithium sustainable batteries. Then we have a topic on uh, microalgae for advanced aviation and for shipping fuels. Another one on green transitions and in energy access in Africa. Then we have a co-fund action. When we have a co-fund action, this means that also there is a support from European and African member states to this uh, action. Then there is a, um, another one on uh, uh, light harvesting and carbon fixation with synthetic biology and or bio-inspired uh, bio biomimetic pathways for renewable direct solar fuels production. Then we have another topic of the partnership on zero emission, and this is on zero emission vehicles. 
And then we have um, a common action between two missions, so the mission oceans and the mission on uh, soil. And uh, this is a, um, a joint demonstration for approaches and solution to address nutrient pollution in the landscape river sea system in the Mediterranean Sea Basin. Then we have another, another slide dealing with uh, the topics on the food, bioeconomy, and natural resources. The first one is uh, an European partnership on sustainable food system for people, planet, and the climate. And then we have uh, two, uh, sorry, three. Uh, topics concerning FNSSA. As we will see later, this is a, um, an important partnership dealing with food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture that is supporting uh, many of, uh, uh, well, is supporting our uh, researchers in, uh, in this sector, proposing different uh, topics. The first one is a uh, uh, partnership with uh, uh, PANAP, that is the Pan-African Network for Economic Analysis of Policies. The other one is um, um, the, the support for the implementation of a platform uh, on the food uh, on, of uh, the, the FNSSA. And uh, the other one is uh, a support for uh, agroecological food production uh, to the market and trade. Then we have another topic on uh, um, food safety. And then we have uh, um, another one that uh, uh, concerted support action with uh, interaction between uh, uh, IPBES, uh, that is a platform on biodiversity, and uh, the uh, panel on uh, climate change for better interconnected biodiversity and climate policies. Then we have another topic on agroforestry management, another one on uh, uh, climate neutral, social just, uh, fair trade food systems. And then we have another topic on um, ocean research and innovation. And finally, another one on uh, bio-based solution for humanitarian applications. Okay, here, uh, these are the topics. Obviously, I could not enter into details about them. Uh, both because uh, we don't have time and also because I don't have the knowledge to explain all of these topics in, on totally different issues to all of you. What I suggest is that you go uh, to read uh, the ones you are interested about. But um, when I was talking about uh, the FNSSA, I was uh, mentioning partnerships that are essential to uh, Favorish a discussion between uh, scientists about uh, uh, the topics that are important for our, our scientific communities. So we have, for example, uh, on public health, the EDCTP, that uh, is a, a platform providing uh, two, three calls any year uh, dealing with uh, clinical trials and uh, with a strong participation of African and European member states plus uh, private sectors. Uh, we can mention Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, Wellcome Trust. And here we have a very big uh, investment, 1.4 billion euros. And uh, for the moment, um, a very big number of projects has been, uh, uh, has been funded. Well, EDCTP, it's a very, uh, very quite well-known uh, platform in the sector, and uh, uh, it changed name in the last uh, calls. It is called the Global Health EDCTP3 Joint Undertaking. And as you can see, there are uh, 14 Europeans and 20 African countries involved with a, a big number of partners. Then we have on Green Transition two platforms. The first one I already mentioned on food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture. And um, um, this platform channeled uh, um, a common investment of more than 700 million euros with uh, more than 300 projects in uh, these uh, four uh, areas. And then we have another one that is uh, younger, but also very active on climate change and sustainable energy with an investment that present more than 100 million and um, sorry, more than, yes, 100 million euros. And um, 
Then we have uh, another one dealing with innovation and technology that is a project Enrich for in Africa. And uh, it's aiming to develop an ideal ecosystem where all the innovators, uh, SMEs, incubators, accelerators can work together. For the moment, uh, and this started with uh, 10 from Africa, 10 for Europe, but it's aiming to support different uh, activities. So we have, uh, um, we have uh, more than 100 entrepreneurs supported so far and over 350 uh, members of uh, this, this kind of community. Then, uh, then um, well, I would like to mention uh, uh, the Global uh, uh, Gateway Investment Package. This is uh, um, an, um, an impressive package of activities that was announced uh, in uh, February last year during the last uh, um, European Union, African Union Summit. And it's a, a joint uh, vision to support Africa uh, for a strong, inclusive, green and digital recovery with a total budget of 150 billion euros. These are all activities that cover obviously um, several, um, uh, several uh, areas, several subjects. And among them, we have three uh, flagships initiatives focusing sp specifically on science. The first one is uh, the innovation agenda. That is an action that will be, uh, will be um, presented in the next slide and the focusing on, uh, on innovation. Then we have uh, the, what is called, uh, maybe is better known as GMS Africa, and is focusing on uh, earth observation and space. Then is the set, the third one is the setting up of regional centers of excellence in uh, the area of green transition. If, uh, Okay, if we want to, if we go to have a quick look at the innovation agenda, this is a, 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 an, um, an ambitious uh, uh, program. Uh, we have been working uh, uh, on this uh, during the last year, and uh, uh, it, we are aiming to create uh, this uh, uh, ideal uh, um, ecosystem with a strong cooperation between African and Europeans in the four areas we identified before. To do this, uh, we had, uh, we published, uh, we studied uh, and we created working groups in uh, these uh, four areas, public health, green transition, innovation, technology, and uh, capacity for science. And, um, and uh, our aim is to set up a series of action on the short, medium, and long term. We had uh, uh, in November a big event, a uh, big stakeholder event in, uh, in Nairobi with participation of more than 500 people. And our objective is to have uh, the, um, the green light uh, from our political master, our minister, in um, a second ministerial for science and technology that we plan to have the 13th of June here in Addis Ababa. Well, when I talk about Horizon Europe and the Horizon uh, 2020, so the previous one, it's also important to have an idea about data, about African participation in uh, the Africa Initiative. So when we talk uh, about uh, Horizon Europe, uh, we see, uh, well, uh, we have, uh, well, just to explain, uh, uh, we have uh, in the blue column, eligible proposals. So the proposal that are above threshold, have been evaluated above threshold, and uh, uh, so technically were considered for funding. Obviously, obviously when we uh, found uh, proposals, we have to follow a uh, uh, ranked list, so we can follow, we can uh, uh, support only a certain number of proposals. So you can see, for example, South Africa, we had uh, 20 percent, we had uh, uh, 209 um, participation that has been funded by us. And then you see the, the most active countries are, are the usual suspects. So uh, some Mediterranean countries has Tunisia, Morocco, then we have Kenya, uh, Uganda, Ghana. And uh, 
It's the same for Horizon Europe, where we have South Africa very active, followed by Kenya, Tunisia, Morocco, Nigeria, and Ghana. Obviously, uh, Mauritius is uh, very active, but it's a small country, so we don't have um, we don't have, uh, uh, well, at least in this slide, data about Mauritius. What is also important to see is uh, the success rate. This means uh, uh, the percentage of topics, of projects, uh, proposals that are uh, retained for funding. So we can say that uh, um, in, for some country, we are above 20%. This means that one out of five uh, proposals uh, will be uh, will be funded i know uh, these are not uh, big numbers but it's a very competitive uh, uh, program and uh, to be with the top scientists in europe and uh, i mean it it happens uh, that uh, uh, that uh, not not uh, not uh, everyone is uh, funded where are the areas where africans are where more involved, well, obviously, uh, food uh, and agriculture, then health, then the grants, Marie Slodowska Curie, then climate, uh, uh, energy mobility, and all the others following. Now, I just want to give you. Um, um, okay, this, uh, sorry, this is not correct. I don't, well, I don't know why I took the data for Ethiopia here. Well, I'm I'm really sorry, but uh, well, uh, the participation of uh, uh, well, I, I I can provide maybe I can go ahead and later I can provide the participation for um, for um, uh, Mauritius. I apologize for this, but probably I mixed up uh, slides. Um, And then, well, um, okay, we have uh, the uh, Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions, that uh, is a, a program extremely interesting for researchers' mobilities. And uh, my colleague Maria will talk later about this. And um, well, here, short list of events. We had the several events for different African countries uh, in, in English, French, Portuguese. And uh, we plan uh, after this to have a big event uh, on uh, South Africa. It's important uh, to remember that all these presentations has been uh, registered and you can uh, uh, watch them again on the website of uh, Euraxis Africa. So here, um, well, um, these are um, key uh, hyperlinks uh, to know more about the first one, to know more about uh, um, the political vision that uh, is essential also to draft uh, um, winning proposals. Then uh, uh, all the information about the innovation agenda. It's also um, very important. Well, here we have Horizon Europe funding and tender portals that is essential also um, for you uh, to know, uh, to read that carefully about the topics. Well, here, the portal of national contact points. The national contact points uh, are the key persons in some African country uh, that um, are basically the entry point to all the informations coming from Brussels for the scientific community. And at the same time, they can help the scientific community to get in touch uh, with Brussels. Unfortunately, my understanding is that uh, the government of Mauritius, even if I've been in touch with them and uh, explaining to them the advantage to have a national contact point, still didn't, uh, didn't uh, um, indicate uh, one, one or more persons doing this job. Okay. Um, with this, I thank you. It was a quite long presentation, but I, I hope it has been, uh, it has been uh, uh, useful. And um, well, I would uh, I would propose uh, that um, uh, we go ahead with uh, with the program. Okay. Well, uh, maybe I can I can already start to reply to one question of uh, Sanyo. Is it possible to have a multi-country proposal such as all 
seats in the Southwest Indian Ocean partnering on a common proposal. Well, that's really welcome. Uh, thanks for, uh, for your question, uh, Sanyu. Uh, what is happening is that, uh, well, usually you must have uh, three partners from different European countries. Plus, you're very welcome to have, as you say, a multi-country proposal. Obviously, that's depending on the topic and uh, you must uh, propose, a, um, you must uh, uh, provide a solution to uh, the, the, the difficulties that are explained, uh, the technical difficulties that are explained in the, in the topic. So, um, well, I, I usually make, uh, make uh, the example, you know, a, a proposal can include, uh, um, well, uh, an, uh, a French uh, economist, a uh, Dutch uh, processing company, uh, an Italian NGO, plus um, an, um, an, uh, an uh, uh, Ethiopian uh, farming company, plus a uh, 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 Mauritian um, Institute for Biology, and uh, uh, another, another institution from, uh, from India, uh, dealing with, uh, for example, um, uh, a company able to sell the final product to the market from India. That's very welcome. That's very feasible. And uh, this, this is one of, uh, of the options. Obviously, there must be a rationale behind it. Okay. Um, now I would go... I would give the floor. Uh, I don't know if Maria is connected. I'm here. Okay, Maria, here you are. I, well, Maria I, is a poli policy mm -hmm. officer at the DG Education and Culture European Commission, and uh, she will present uh, about uh, Maria Sklodowska reaction. Maria, please, you have the floor. Thanks. Hello, hello. Thank you. First of all, can you see my screen? Yes, everything is okay. Yes, just, okay. I'm trying. Let me just. Yes. Yeah, if you can put full screen. Yes, I have. Is it okay now? It's okay. Just uh, uh, try to move uh, the block. There is some blocks related to Zoom. The attendees, the list. Okay, if you can move them. I don't have it on my screen, so this is why I'm trying to. Let me see now. Yeah. Try just to move uh, a little bit and. Everything it will um, be okay. Okay, but now there it's is, not now the slides are okay. There is uh, the right. Just a second. Yes, if you can move it. This is all for because I see fully my screen. Yeah, so it's I okay now. It's okay. Yes, it's clear. Yes. Go is ahead. it okay? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Man. Okay, good. We're there. We're there. So uh, good afternoon to everybody. Yes, my name is uh, Maria and I work in the MSCA uh, Marie Skłodowska Theory Actions Unit in the Digital Education, Culture, News and Sport uh, in, in Brussels. And today I will give you a brief overview uh, about the, the MSCA. Uh, Piero has already mentioned a little bit. Uh, it will be a short presentation and then if you have questions, I hope it will raise interest. Uh, we can then discuss further details. So, um, Again, as already uh, presented briefly by Piero, uh, MSCA are part of, uh, of Horizon or Framework Program, currently Horizon Europe, and they belong to Pillar 1, so what we call Excellent Science, with the other programs that you can see on this slide, which you have seen. So I will zoom in quickly here into Pillar 1, so Excellent Science. So uh, Marie Skłodowska Curie actions have as its main goal to equip researchers with new knowledge and skills through mobility and training. Um, our budget is 6.6 .6 million, which is uh, an increase from the previous uh, framework program. Uh, and just as uh, um, curiosity, as you see at the bottom, uh, in the past 10 uh, years, we have had 12 Nobel Prize winners, which are this way or another related to MSCA. And we are very happy and proud to actually share this. So either they were supervisors or they were researchers themselves. Uh, the program is really based on excellence, and I think like the, the overall framework program is quite competitive, so it also means that success rates are, uh, you know, relatively low. This also varies in MSDA uh, action by action, which I will, I will shortly explain. Um, 
the key features of the program are the ones that you see on the slide, and I will go briefly uh, into, into each of them. So although NSTA is um, a program for, for mobility and training of researchers, this is really our, our main focus. Uh, we put a lot of emphasis really on training and skills development, competence development of our researchers, meaning that they, through the different programs that we support, they get not only, they're trained not only in research specific skills, but they also are trained and they uh, acquire uh, transversal skills from, uh, from communication um, to, to teamwork and, and many others. But this is one element of it. Uh, we are also very, very much concerned with, or we, we put focus on partnership building. So MSTA support development of programs, of doctoral programs uh, uh, and different partnerships across different sectors, across different countries, uh, across disciplines. And we know from previous analysis and reports that MSTA are really very, very important factor in building international partnerships and ecosystems. Uh, for, for knowledge exchange that uh, without such a program as MSTA would not probably be uh, that strong or that, uh, that possible. So as I said, on the one hand, we have support for individual researchers, but at the same time, we really, uh, uh, we also focus a lot on the development of partnerships. As I already said, we have the, what we call the triple I. So we are a very international program, the most international part of, of framework program, in fact. Uh, we have supported researchers of 160 nationalities and organizations from almost 140 countries. Uh, we are interdisciplinary uh, and also cross-sectoral. So again, we encourage very much participation of organizations from different sectors. And I think Kara already gave you a very good example of how this can look having NGOs, having companies, uh, universities, but also public administrations as part of the same consortium and partnership across, across the globe. Um, very importantly, uh, because we know that this is one of the, the most important also the questions that we, that we get is what topics and areas do we cover? MSTA is fully bottom up. So it means that um, any area and any domain and discipline of research is, so the program is open to any area of research and we welcome uh, topics and disciplines uh, across the board. Um, maybe just one last thing that's very important is that when I mentioned training of researchers, we also placed a lot of importance on supporting attractive working and employment conditions uh, of our researchers and you know preventing precarious position. And we are active in many of the, the, the initiatives that exist in this regard. Um, so. How is the, the program structured? So these are the core principles that I mentioned already. Now, how do we support researchers and organizations? Well, we have five main actions, and I will focus on the four uh, for which organizations and researchers from Mauritius are eligible to apply. So doctoral networks. So these are basically partnerships, consortia of um, different organizations that create a doctoral program, and then they recruit researchers, so people who are who don't have a doctoral degree but would like to pursue one. So they basically are recruited as part of this doctoral network and they they attend the, the doctoral program through the, the partnership. They can be hosted in one organization, but they can also be mobile during the doctoral program and have uh, their secondment, some kind of training uh, during the doctoral program. Then we also have postdoctoral fellowships, which are for those who already have a PhD uh, doctoral degree and they would like to pursue their research further. So these are one-on-one, -on -one, meaning that postdoctoral fellowships support one researcher who has a host organization and then through different modalities uh, pursues uh, his, her, or their uh, research project. Uh, staff exchanges um, is an action that usually is the, the first entry point for organizations that uh, do not have experience with MSCA. Um, not only because success rates are maybe the highest, but because also they are a very interesting model. They support exchange of staff uh, across, again, organization sectors and countries, uh, shorter or longer term, staff working on a joint research project. And this is the action that supports not only research staff, but also uh, staff that is um, technical or managerial. The only important thing is that 
the stuff that's mobile and it goes on exchange is this way or another involved in research project. And we know at least uh, the, from, from the from data that we have that the staff as the exchanges are quite popular in, in, in Africa, the countries that participate. Um, finally, co-fund, as uh, the name itself says, so co-fund basically is co-funding. So we support and co-finance uh, existing regional, national, or international programs at doctoral and postdoctoral level. So this is kind of a cascade funding where you support the program that then further supports researchers in their uh, research endeavors and pursuits. The last one that I will not go into details is MSC and citizens, but this is uh, eligible for uh, member states and associated countries. So um, in this case, very, very few countries in, in, in Africa. So I will not go into details uh, in this. Maybe just to link to what I just said, uh, you know, depending on the level of association and different statuses we have. So we have member states, associated countries, and the third countries where most of the countries in Africa are, including Mauritius. Uh, however, the, the options for participation are still plenty um, when it comes to participation of organizations. So any legal entity from any sector, so academic and non-academic, can participate in our actions. The only difference would be whether they would participate as a beneficiary, meaning signing the grant agreement, directly getting funding, which is the case for our doctoral networks, so the doctoral programs, or as an associate with partners in the, the other actions that I mentioned, in which case, basically, an organization would be able to host the researcher, but would not sign the grant agreement and would not get direct funding. When it comes to individual researchers, Really, we, as I said, MSCA is open to any nationality and any discipline. So it means that researchers from Mauritius or any African country are eligible to apply. So to do their research, whether they want to obtain a PhD degree or whether they are uh, more experienced researchers and want to pursue a specific research project with, with partners um, across the world. Just briefly, um, an overview and uh, to give a little bit of uh, a comparison, I will not go too much into, into numbers, but it's just to encourage you to maybe apply. You can see here the numbers from Horizon 2020, the overall participation uh, of, of African organizations, researchers, uh, and individual institutions, uh, and how uh, Mauritius is placed there, um, and the organizations actually from Mauritius that, uh, that participated. Um, we have had 45 countries from, from Africa involved. Now, the situation in Horizon Europe, and it is very tentative because these are really, really just the preliminary results from the first calls, and uh, we will have uh, much more uh, at a later stage. So what we currently have is um, are the numbers that you see here, but the numbers of individual researchers, which we currently know of, uh, are only concerned with the um, postdoctoral fellowship. So when it comes to uh, other actions, the researchers still need to be recruited. So this is why I'm saying, I'm just giving you a tentative numbers a little bit to have an overview, but this will soon change and, uh, and increase. So you see the state of play for the time being, let's say. Um, here um, is the table with upcoming calls. I'm not going into the dates and details because you will receive the, the presentation afterwards. But this is again, just to give you an overview of what's coming up, uh, what the available budget is for the 2023 calls. And again, to encourage you to apply and um, look for partners, or if you already have them, you know, to, to um, start preparing. Uh, and to help you in that, here also in this slide and the next one, you have uh, a number of documents and also links and resources which can help you in the in the preparation in getting informed, as well as you see here some useful links uh, and maybe just as a highlight, one of the I think key contact points in our case is our alumni association. Um, they are very active, and we have African an African chapter uh, and very active chair. So I think that um, for any questions, specific questions you might have, they would also be a very, very good uh, contact. And with this, I think, yes, um, I, I thank you. And I'm very happy to answer any questions you may have. Many, many thanks, Maria, for uh, your um, 
uh, your presentation. I think it's very, very attractive. I'm sorry, I'm not anymore a PhD or post, uh, postdoc students because I really would be very, very glad to, to apply for, uh, for the Marie Curie options. And then now let's, uh, let's give the floor to our Aero Access Africa desk, uh, that is Hamed Malel, that will present us uh, the Aero Access platform. Thank you, uh, uh, dear Piero. You see my screen already? Uh, yes, we see it. If you can put it on uh, full screen, but if not, it's fine also like this. And now? Maybe. Okay, now it's better. Yes, okay. Um, so uh, I am uh, very happy today to uh, to present your Access Africa in this event. Uh, first of all, I will present your Access worldwide, uh, and after that, I will present the main tasks of your Access Africa. So for uh, your Access worldwide, first of all, uh, your Access is uh, initiative of the European Commission established with the uh, aim to provide free access to information about uh, research in Europe, opportunities for research funding and international collaboration and professional mobility. It links researchers in worldwide, uh, mainly in Africa, to Europe. Furthermore, the network is open to all uh, nationalities and research fields. Um, uh, for worldwide, we are in North America, we are in Latin America and Caribbean, India, China, Asia, Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and finally we are in Africa. The main tasks of uh, EuroAccess Africa are, first of all, management and development of the EuroAccess Africa network. Uh, this includes uh, building partnerships with uh, African research institutions uh, and organizations uh, such as promoting research mobility between Africa and Europe. And support for African researchers, this includes providing information, advice, and assistance to African researchers who are uh, interested uh, in pursuing their careers in Europe, as well as supporting their career development of African researchers who are already working in Europe. And uh, promoting European research opportunities in Europe, um, such uh, like today, Horizon Europe, uh, Africa Initiative Tool, and all opportunities given in PDR1 and uh, PDR2. Uh, and finally, reinforce the networking with all RNI African actors. Uh, this includes organized events uh, and activities that promote networking and collaboration. We organize and co-organize many events, online events and face-to-face -face events um, for session and practical workshops. Uh, to uh, related to how to draft a proposal, how to write a proposal, and how to uh, be part in uh, uh, European projects. So here you can see uh, the platform of your access. And just first of all, if you you have Google, put your access in Google, and after that you will see this platform. And there is worldwide. Uh, in the worldwide, there is nine hubs uh, already mentioned. So you can see here Africa. And if you can click on Africa, you can see here the button sign up for free membership to your Access Africa. So it is free. Please uh, sign up to be able to receive all information in real time about all opportunities given by European countries to African countries. Uh, uh, and researchers from uh, Africa. So there is uh, here a review of um, 2020 for your Access Africa, and there is the uh, official launch of the first uh, year of your Access Africa. And you can see we have uh, participated in many events, uh, physical events, face-to-face -face events, and uh, we have organized and co-organized many online uh, events and meetings with many uh, organizations with many of organizations in Africa. We have participated in South Africa and Kenya, Ethiopia, Egypt, uh, Tunisia, Morocco, and some online events with Libya, Senegal, Benin, Nigeria, Cameroon, Rwanda. And there is the first uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, today there is the, the first one with Mauritius. Um, you can see here some photos uh, from uh, our activities in 2020-2020 uh, related to some uh, info session uh, and practical workshops related to how to draft proposal in Horizon Europe. 
and how to get uh, more opportunities in research mobility programs, such an ECA, uh, individual fellowships and global fellowships. You can see here some photos in Egypt, in Cape Town, uh, in South Africa. Uh, here, what can we do for you? First of all, promote EU national research landscape, promote EU funded opportunities, promote your access network, invite speakers from the network and connect researchers with research labs. And how can we work together? Uh, invite us to present in your bilateral events. Please uh, don't hesitate to invite us. We can participate with you in many events if you want to present some opportunities uh, related to uh, research mobility programs, related to Horizon Europe, and we can present all opportunities given by Europe to uh, your institutions and uh, your organizations and such, your universities and laboratories. Forward us requests about EU funding to go to your countries and finally tell us how can we support you further. Our tools mainly are the website, uh, social media, flash notes, newsletter, and processions, and practical workshops. And you can see here on the website of Access Africa, there is a lot, a lot of opportunities given to PhD positions, uh, PhD uh, students, and post uh, uh, doctoral fellowships available in many countries and many organizations in Europe. You can see also all events and you can participate for the free for free uh, and you can already uh, watch the recording video for each webinar and each online events already organized and you can also download all presentation and all slides related to these events for your access portal in general so for your access portal there is uh, plus than 2 million visitor per year and uh, plus than 1.2 million page views per month and there is a free and for your access jobs, uh, for example, here in 2021, there is more than uh, uh, 93,000 research positions already published in 2021, really a big number. So um, join us, uh, be informed, be proactive, click on this button and join our community of researchers. We are in Facebook, we are in Twitter, and LinkedIn, we are in uh, YouTube, and our email is africa.youraccess.net free, easy, and valuable. Thank you for your attention. And uh, Dr. Piero, I will give you, uh, give you the floor. Many, many thanks, uh, Hamed, for uh, this presentation ab about uh, this interesting platform that is very useful. It's very easy to register and uh, receive a lot of information for, for free. And now it's uh, the moment of the testimonial. So I'm uh, very glad uh, to give the floor to uh, Nadine, Nadine Laguette, that is uh, an ERC grantee. And um, uh, well, she will tell us uh, how she joined uh, the, um, the EU uh, funding systems, uh, good points, bad points, difficulties, and uh, deadlocks, uh, everything uh, you, you want <laughs> to tell us, Nadine, we are happy to hear. Please, you have the floor. I'm very glad to have you with us today. Okay, so thank you for having me uh, today. Uh, it's the first time that I'm giving a testimonial about my European experience. Uh, I'm not really sure where to start. So um, and just to tell you about my background. So I work in biological sciences, uh, more precisely in uh, innate immunity. So I'm a person from life sciences in general. Uh, my first experience with the um, EU funding was when I uh, received an ERC uh, starting grant a few years back. Um, and um, subsequently, I was also awarded an ERC proof of concept grant to build up, uh, build up on some ideas that emerged from that ERC starting grant. And finally, just this year, I received an ERC consolidator grant, which aims at consolidating my research team. So. What I can say as a really positive with the European Research Council grants, uh, especially the ERCs, which are individual fellowships that are aimed to support um, one person in the creation, building, consolidation, and then you know advancement of their research team, is that it allows you a lot of uh, liberty concerning the ideas that you're able to develop within your proposal. And um, it gives you a lot of fun, uh, freedom to uh, pursue uh, very uh, original ideas. 
And um, also, um, from a more um, political point of view, it also has some sort of prestige attached to it. So people tend to take you more seriously when you do your research with the support of the European Research Council. Um, also, um, uh, obtaining these grants has also helped me um, embark into, let's say, the more general European experience. So recently, I've also embarked into writing some of those uh, MSCA grants. Um, uh, yeah, just once you get into the European mood for writing proposals, I think you sort of unlock some um, aspects and uh, points that um, you, you start realizing that are important for um, Europe in general in their evaluation processes. So yeah, this is, um, that was my entry uh, portal, the ERC, but then it did open to me, um, open my eyes on ma the many possibilities that uh, exist um, with uh, the European funding. Um, the, it's true that there are a lot of, um, I wouldn't say bad points, but um, you know, with um, when, once you receive such a large amounts of money to uh, perform your research, um, it comes uh, with a lot of uh, rules and restrictions that are put in place to ensure that the grant will be spent um, properly and also that serve ultimately to make sure that you're you know doing the work that you're supposed to be doing and support you if you experience any type of um, issue throughout the course of the grant. But this comes uh, with a lot of paperwork, a lot of reporting, a lot of um, you know assessments of you know the process, how is it going and yeah, so this, I would say, is the bad point, uh, the financial reporting that is attached with uh, all those uh, grants that can be very technical. And I think this is um, where the support of the, um, well, all the people that we've uh, listened to today, uh, it, their support is very important to allow us to, um, to, to, to write the grant, to structure it, and to be able to, to, to perform the work that is planned for those grants. So, yeah, this is... Uh, like this without any preparation and slides, I this is uh, what I can say, but I would be very happy to take um, uh, questions. Okay, well, many, many thanks, uh, Nadine, for your objective, uh, objective uh, description of advantages and disadvantages. Well, yeah, well, we know that the rules and the restrictions are quite uh, uh, red tape in our in our activity. May I ask you how everything started? Where did you learn about these opportunities as a, uh, for an ERC starting grant? So I guess in the, well, since I'm based in Europe at the moment, these are very popular uh, for initiating a research group because starting your research comes with a lot of costs, you know, just startup installation and, you know, buying the equipment that you need and recruiting the right people. So these are quite popular um, around here, especially for uh, debuting scientists. So they're very broadly advertised. Um, I, I work for the CNRS. Uh, so it's the main uh, research organization in France. Uh, and um, well, they do push us a lot uh, towards uh, applying for these grants uh, because, in fact, the success rates are quite good. So that's why we are strongly encouraged. Um, let's say, for example, the success rates are very similar to national grants, but the amount of money that you receive at an ERC grant is four or five times higher what, than what you would get through um national um, grant. So uh, we are strongly encouraged to um, at least have a try, uh, have a go. Um, what I can say though that I didn't uh, stress as a drawback from these grants is that they do ask for a lot more work, preparatory work than usual uh, national grants. So I'd say from my own experience, I would spend um, the six uh, good months of the year just uh, preparing the written document, then a few more months to prepare for a presentation because there is also an um, audition uh, that is attached to um, the evaluation process. So yeah, it, it is a lot of work, but once you've made it, then yeah, the reward is all the better, I guess. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for this. It's uh, it's very clear. Well, uh, I'm checking uh, the the questions we have. Well, I saw one question of always for. Uh, um, okay, well, I see. I see Maria. It's already. It's already typing uh, the the answer. Maria, I don't. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if you also want to, well, you want to, to also reply uh, alive. So that's also can be, well, if, if, uh, if uh, it can be um, useful also for the others. Yeah, it's- uh, Yeah, indeed, I can do it maybe faster and then everybody is uh, aware of the answer. No, so there was a question also on support for applications. So uh, Piero or Ahmed or myself, well, directly we cannot do it. We have, uh, you know, national contact points in MSTA, I mean, Horizon as well. We have Euraxis, which is also very, very, you know, helpful. So, you know, if, if for, for us concretely, I'm talking now and then I'll quickly add if you want. Um, so we have only two contact points in, in Africa, Ethiopia, and then as of recently, we have actually Cape Verde. So it's quite, quite recent. Uh, we are, we hope to have more, but there is a project of, of, of NCPs of MSTA. I've, I have provided the link in the answer where you can actually see the list. You can also see what kind of support is provided. You can also find very useful resources and documents in addition to what you will find on the slides I shared in the presentation. So for this, I think uh, all these little technical questions that I think Nadine already said, it's a lot of work. Uh, you know, you need to kind of get into the mindset a little bit also to, to, to understand certain things so to make them easier. Uh, and then uh, for any more general question, I also left my, my email. And if you have, you know, kind of overarching questions about actions or eligibility, I will be happy to address or ask my colleagues who are responsible for specific actions. So, yeah, this is just to say that the support is there of different level, different kind, but uh, yeah, we are always happy to to respond. Oh, super! That's a that's a very very comprehensive uh, uh, reply. Just to remember that uh, there is a, um, a national contact point for Marie Curie, plus uh, there is a national contact point for Horizon Europe. As I mentioned, unfortunately, Mauritius doesn't have them, but you can always use uh, uh, national contact points of other countries. You know, I mean, uh, you can you can uh, enter in the portal. You can find, for example, in Germany, they have a national contact point for any single topic: climate change, agriculture, public health. And you can contact them. Say, look, I'm a specialist on this subject. I can be useful to for for your your key players to to set up a proposal because you must be conscious that in Europe, all the key player on this on your topic are working on this are brainstorming are trying to find options to 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 draft the best proposal so if you come with a, with a good solution with a good idea no worries that they can can they are very happy to be in touch with you to talk with you and if i can mention in africa there is a the, the South Africans, they have a super strong uh, national contact point system. They have also um, a project that is called uh, um, MSTAT. And, and uh, they, they are really, they can be also a good, a good entry point to have a lot of information. And uh, they will also be organizing the event we're planning for the 27th of February. So if you are interested also to know what they are doing can be also useful to be, to follow that uh, that event, and uh, well, um, I if I can uh, um, mention one more point that was in uh, the previous answer a question of uh, Sunyi, how to get in touch with the Europeans? Well, that's also depending on you. You know, you have a, you have a, you are a professor, you have a student uh, doing a PhD in Europe, get in contact with them. You have a, you have a, a, a co co author of some of your proposal in Europe. Get in touch with them, and for sure they will have, they will have, will have open discussions with you on uh, on this. So every every way, it's a, it's a, it's a good. Um, well, uh, I all the the speakers they are very welcome to comment about what I say. If they have other points, uh, Maria, Nadine, uh, Hamed, and here we have another question. Uh, from uh, uh, Loretta, must an African researcher collaborate with European researchers for inception? Someone want to reply? If not, I will give the floor also. I have started typing, but maybe it's easier to. No, I was just replying that because if we're talking about individual researchers in, in MSTA as an individual researcher, so if you already have a PhD, you would participate, let's say, in a postdoctoral uh, fellowship, then you would need to have 
uh, a host, a host organization that comes from an EU member state or associated country. And you can find also the, the the list of these countries and see basically where you would uh, where you would look for a uh, for host. Um, as um, as a researcher who wants to, for example, take uh, part in staff exchanges that I mentioned, you would basically then need to turn to your institution because then your institution would need to be part of a research project and then you would be seconded basically to another organization. This would not uh, necessarily need uh, to be an uh, EU, um, an EU country. But then again, this would be, you know, you as an affiliate to an organization would then would need to search within your organization and then form a part, an international partnership. Good. Thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Maria, for your reply. So now I would say if uh, there is some, uh, someone want to make a question, um, alive, just uh, rise uh, is her hand. Okay, so I would propose uh, um, we can have a, a, a very short uh, uh, tour uh, tour among the speakers, uh, one minute each to to mention uh, the key message you want we want to leave uh, to the to the attendees. I will start uh, well with uh, Hamed. Uh, okay, thank you, dear Piero. Just. Uh, um, uh, I want to say um, that be proactive, be proactive because when, if you need to, 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 to make sure to have the opportunity, you, you should be proactive, be connected, uh, you should enhance your visibility, the visibility of your organization, such university or laboratory or, or uh, uh, official organization. And after that, there is a lot, a lot of opportunities you can count on us in uh, your access Africa because we, we we put all information, all opportunities on the website. You can uh, connect uh, with uh, with us. There is a mailing list, and you can add your email and your some some information about uh, your uh, area of interest, and you will receive a lot of uh, information. And don't hesitate uh, if you, uh, you can contact us, and you we, we can. Uh, Assist you uh, uh, if if you will uh, if you need to 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 get opportunity such uh, mobility to Europe such to be involved in uh, Horizon Europe projects and many more. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ahmed. Uh, Nadine. Yeah, that is a very good point uh, to keep. Um um proactive but also to keep your eyes open for the many opportunities that are around i think i mean even once you're already involved in this type of projects there is many opportunities that you just completely miss out on and there are so many deadlines so many possibilities and i think attending this type of webinar is very important to um you know have a full overview of what is available so yeah that would be my message keep your eyes open thanks uh, uh nadine maria well, because a lot of it has been said, I'm very happy that I come after Nadine because <laughs> she is the example of what I wanted to add to what already has been said by her and by Ahmed. And this is on top, you know, of all the support structures that exist and we mentioned them. I think also experiences of your peers and colleagues. And by this, I mean, you know, again, I'm going to, in our case, the MSCI Alumni Association and all the active individuals and groups who are trying to help and support. And I'm saying this from personal experience because I am a beneficiary of an EU you know, education program who at the time came from a third country. I Googled things myself, but when I learned what I wanted, I actually then searched for support structures that helped me and also asked my peers who already had this experience to, uh, to explain to me how this works in practice because you can have all the technical details, but you also need to get a little bit of the empirical part of it, you know, okay, what if, what when, so I really think, uh, you know, individuals like Nadine can be the lighthouses and uh, get in touch, you know, in MSC, case of MSC, get in touch with alumni, just, you know, go to the website, the link is in the slides and ask, ask questions. So this is my uh, 
Okay, okay. thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Maria. Well, I, I realize that we didn't reply to the question of Dr. Viola from Nigeria. Uh, well, thanks for the, the, your interest. As uh, other colleagues mentioned, you need to be very proactive. Unfortunately, the position of national contact point must be allocated uh, to, uh, well, to one person or one institution by the government. So you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, be allocated to this position by us. You must ask to the Nigerian government. And, um, and uh, so that's about, uh, well, if you're interested in Euroaccess, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, find uh, the, um, the registration of the event we had for Nigeria. That was some, uh, some well, last week. Uh, so also this can be, can be useful. Um, and I hope this uh, reply to your question. That say, I, I see that uh, the ambassador is raising his hand. So uh, please ambassador, you have the floor. Uh, you have to unmute yourself, Janine. Okay, Janine is the key person in our delegation in, uh, in Mauritius. Hi, everybody. Yes. So thank you for this nice presentation, very useful. And uh, it's a pity that here in Mauritius, they don't confirm the nomination of any contact points because uh, last year when you came, I remember uh, our, our colleagues from the Ministry of Finance uh, showed to us that uh, there are a few contact points already nominated, but I don't understand when I tried to contact them, nobody responded. I mean, through the ministry. So I promise that uh, we will get back to the ministry and we will follow up on the nomination of contact points because Horizon 2020, it is obvious, it has such a huge potential for Mauritius and I'm sure uh, even if, if already, if today we don't get a lot of participants. I'm sure universities, the Mauritius Research Council, the Ministry of, uh, I mean, uh, Education, they are interested in the program, but probably the message didn't uh, pass, was not passed to them. But I can assure you that I will do the needful to follow up on that. I mean, for the delegation to follow up on that, because I'm not the focal point for research and innovation. I'm following up on other dossier. But I will talk to my colleague and um, uh, be confident that we will follow up. So all inform me, I suppose that you'd share, you would share the slides with us so that we can uh, share to those that didn't attend today. Yeah, well, we, we, can, we will do it for sure. We will uh, do to any, any yeah. attendees, but also they will be in the, in the website uh, of uh, Araxis Africa. We will. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for all the information you provide us at the last minute, because I asked only, I mean, two hours, some additional information on how Mauritius benefited. And what happened is that uh, it was too late and the ambassador didn't get my last, uh, the last version of the speaking notes. But anyway, uh, I will share with him the information that I had from you. Super. And I Super heard uh, Nadine, it's, uh, we are very proud because I know she, she is from uh, Mauritius, although she is staying in Europe. So she's a, an example that, uh, I mean, Horizon 2020 can use, well, if she agrees, to encourage her falls here in the country. Yes, Nadine? for sure. Yeah. I'd be very happy to um, support the Mauritian uh, involvement in the European programs. Yes, come to visit right. us at the delegation next time when you are in Mauritius. Let's have a yes, chat. Yes, I'll be there in Passada. July. <laughs> oh, so let me know, okay? And mm. we introduce you to the ambassador and maybe we can invite the universities, universities you know, and all of your other that researchers, good, yes. the institution, mm. and you can share a line with them. We have a cup of tea, you know, this, this can be very useful. Yeah, sure. But don't hesitate to contact me. I don't have your contact details, but yeah, let's be in touch. Mm. Yes. So I rely on Ahmed and uh, colleagues to send me your contacts so, so that we can establish, uh, I mean, uh, work out something for during your visit in Mauritius next time. You know, yes. you know, Janine, I met a really few people that had the three ERC grants all together. I mean, it, I'm really <laughs> impressed too. So it's a, you have really, this is a great opportunity for a Mauritian scientist to get in touch with Nadine and to talk to her. Yes. 
And but I would yeah, arrange I mean, that. You can count please, on us. Please, please yeah. do it. That, that's okay. Thank you. I'm very happy to help. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks to you. May it has been add? great. I'm Thanks to you all. If I may just add very quickly, but yeah, because Go also ahead. from my side, uh, I don't think that I can directly share contact details that we have of our research fellows. But if you're interested also for Mauritius for projects and supervisors and coordinators, we can also provide this information. And then through them, you can get in touch with actually um, your national participating in different MSCA actions. So there is a way to, you can just write, I've left my email address. And uh, we can share information, you know, through which you can then get to the, the Mauritian um, researchers participating in MSCA. Super. Fine. Many, many thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye, all. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. Merci beaucoup.